so while I've been waiting on the pieces to finish up the fuel rail and then the wiring for the inside, I've been working on some other things. Um, we've got all the pieces to finish up the intercooler piping coming in. Once they come in, I'll just need to cut holes here and there and then do a little bit of test fitting to figure out where everything's going to go. But not too much left for the engine bay. Um, once I have everything, I can plug fuel rail back in, put this piping where it's going to go, and then I can plug the last of the wires in and zip tie everything to where it's going to stay. And then while I've been waiting for the pieces to do that, I went ahead and cleaned up the wiring inside. I used the term cleaned up loosely, but it is functional. I can get to everything that I need. I'm not sure if I'm going to go long term with this double cluster setup, but like over here, the speedo should work, the gas level should work, and I think I can make the stock temp sensor work. And then over here, we're gonna have RPMs and I think coolant temp. So yeah, for now, I'm just gonna run two. Um, I've got access to both this fuse box and this one over here. It's kind of behind a couple wires, but I can get to it. Um, even the stock cruise control, I think, should work off the Eclipse. So, yeah, uh, next thing I gotta do is start wiring some ignition switches here, and I'll need to run some wires to the fuel pump down there. Which is definitely getting there. Getting super, super close to this point. I'm excited. All right, so we got the new injector seals in and also the heel coils. So what you do before you put a heel coil in is you tap it out. So that's what I'm working on here. The tap tool won't reach in the spot, so I'm just using a wrench and applying downward pressure to it as I'm going. You wanna do a half turn and then a quarter turn back, then another half turn, then a quarter turn back. It takes a while, but it's worth doing because stripped threads are a pain for sure. So let's get this done. So here's after the tap and I don't know how well it's folks in there, but it looks pretty good. It looks like this is gonna work, so. Now I'm gonna put the actual coil in. And for that, you just thread this like a screw um, into what you just tapped, and then the inside of it is threaded as well, and you should be able to put the same size bolt that was in there, so. Let's see how this goes. And here's how it looks with the Hilo coil installed. Looks good, busted that little tang off at the end. And sure enough, the bolt threads right in with no problems. So yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised at how easy that was. I think that these two bolts and this zip tie I'm gonna put here will hold this fuel rail down fine. I've heard people on the forums say that they just used two bolts and had no issues, so the zip tie is really just to go one step further. Um, sometime when I upgrade injectors, I probably will get a carbide drill bit or something so that I can drill out that and helicoil that. But for right now, I think this will be fine. I'll be sure to check when I start it up make sure it's not leaking fuel, but I don't anticipate any more problems. Baby turtle. Anyways, today I'm trying to get everything done on the truck besides the intercooler piping and radiator hoses, which I'm still waiting to come in the mail. So that just leaves vacuum lines, putting oil in. I think all the oil spots are covered, so it shouldn't leak anywhere this time. Making some switches for the ignition and, and making a wire for the fuel pump. And then I want to put a boost gauge in, so I have to go pick up one of those. And that's going to be it. And I need to finish the engine wiring harness, but it's almost done. All right, got a lot of stuff done. The engine harness is completely plugged in. Um, I had to extend a few wires here and there. And uh, there were a couple that are really difficult to get to due to the new location of the water pump. But got them all plugged in. It's all good to go. Um, got the overflow tank for the coolant in and got a line ran for that. So we're all set there. 
now I am getting the vacuum line sorted out and as part of that I'm going to put a boost gauge in just a Harbor Freight $15 boost gauge the reviews on it are pretty good so I'm going to give it a shot and yeah that's pretty much it alright so a little update on the truck I've got all the engine bay wiring done I'm still waiting on hoses and intercooler piping before I can actually start it. But in the meantime, I combined the two grounds and then all the positives from the two harnesses. So I'm gonna be running dual harness setup on this truck. And then the inside is done as well, at least for now. So I've got just all the wires plugged in where they need to be and the other ones zip tied out of the way. Some of my gauges are gonna be working here. Some of the stock gauges from the truck are gonna be working. Picked up a Harbor Freight boost gauge and wired in some switches. Um, access to all the fuse panels so as far as I know this should work I also did get the time to run a wire for the fuel pump so it's grounded there and we've got a wire going into the cab so yeah slowly getting there also we'll put some gas in it so should be able to start the same as soon as we get some radiator hoses and new core piping also I had to order a J pipe I thought I had one that came with the Eclipse, but turns out it didn't, so slowly but surely. Um, also, I managed to make the coolant overflow stock with the truck work, so soon. Soon. <laughs>